Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this is Recording Guitar. Uh, we're going to help you get started uh, doing just that with Recording Guitar. Uh, my name is Dan Hughley, uh, and uh, I have with me uh, John DiNicola. He's one of our product specialists. Uh, John, tell me, uh, where are you from originally, and uh, how long have you been, been playing guitar? Hey, Dan. Good to see you, man. Um, you yeah, I'm from New Jersey uh, originally. Um, living in New York City now, so I've been from this area basically my whole life. Um, been playing guitar about oh, about half my life now, I'd say. So I'd say without dating myself too much, about fifteen plus years or so. Um, so yeah, it's been a long run. Oh, that's great. Um, so have you have you been playing a little bit uh, at home lately, uh, passing some time? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a great thing to <clears throat> happy that I was I was able to have. You know, I don't have all my stuff here uh, within the smaller apartment, but, but luckily I have my old trusty Strat here and uh, my acoustic. So yeah, I've had been able to keep going. So that's been awesome. good. Very cool. Um, yeah, and I've I've seen you actually do some live streaming on uh, a couple of different occasions, and it's uh, it's really nice to sit back and listen to some music being played. Yeah. Um, but um, let's talk about what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm going to give you a quick rundown, set the table, if you will, and uh, let our, our viewers know what's going to happen. So we're going to uh, talk about some reasons to record yourself and the benefits of that, uh, the necessary hardware that's required, uh, the software that's required. And then John is going to go uh, for the most most of the stream. John is going to uh, demonstrate a lot of that. He's going to um, play some guitar, record it, show you how to do that in Pro Tools first, which I guess I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Um, yeah, and, and any questions? This is really cool. We're we're getting questions coming in already, so we'll we'll cover some of those at the end as well. So, uh, thank you, Aran. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, we will uh, cover that uh, later on in the stream. Um, but but John, let me um, pass this back over to you. Uh, let's talk about some of the reasons to record yourself and and the benefits of it. Yeah, sure. Um, well, there's quite a few things. I mean, <clears throat> I think one thing people don't tend to think about a lot is the uh, the practice side of it. So you know, um, just being able to listen back to things that you're playing and kind of pick up where some of your deficiencies are, where you can improve. Uh, for me, it really helps with that. Um, so just kind of getting better practicing, um, you know, moving on from there, it's also really great as a songwriting tool because, um, you know, with having uh, setups like this, not only can I record one guitar part, but I can record multiple guitar parts on top of each other, uh, play parts against myself, um, even getting into virtual instruments and, and being able to do a whole track uh, by yourself at home. Cool. Um, so that's really fun as well. And uh, I think we were also talking about, you know, going back to the practice side of things. Um, yep. If you're someone who's taking lessons, um, you know, especially if you're, you know, if you're at home trying to do it online, um, yeah. you know, being able to record and, and send those recordings back and forth is really helpful, too. Yeah, because I mean, most lessons are most likely virtual at this point. Um, uh, James has a question I'm going to answer really quickly, just so you, I don't have to drag you out. Uh, James is asking if we're going to go through techniques for recording acoustic guitar. Not in this stream, but we will do that in a, in a future stream, James. So um, as we're moving on, uh, John, you want to talk about some of the, uh, the hardware there that you have? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm just using a uh, Fender Stratocaster here. Um, got some modified uh, pickups in there, but uh, pretty standard single coil. Um, we're going into the Scarlett, uh, in this case, the 4i4. I'm using the 4i4 because it has some loopback features, which are great for streaming. Um, but you could do this with something as small as a Scarlett solo. Um, so I'm just having my guitar plugged right into here. Um, it's really easy to get started. You can kind of see right now I have the levels, um, the gain halos there are lighting up. So it's super easy to set your levels. You know, if it's too hot, it'll get red right there for you. So we'll get into that a little more in a minute. Um, but yeah. So we got that. We're going with the Scarlet 4i4 today, and that's that's basically it. We're going to do a direct connection to that, at least for the for this stream today. Uh, before we move on to the software, do you want to talk about the the Easy Start tool with the the Scarlet interfaces? Yeah, absolutely. So another great thing about this is um, Scarlet interfaces come with a lot of great software. But we're going to be using that today. And so when you plug the new Scarlet in for the first time, it'll actually pop up with a little window. You can click on it, and it takes you into our Getting Started tool. Um, and then that'll walk you through the software installation. So it asks you different questions, maybe what, what software you'd like to use, or even just, you know, what, uh, what do you want to record? And there's tons of great videos there, um, kind of how to set up guides. And then that's also where you'll find all the software that we're using today. Very cool. Very cool stuff, John. Thank you for that. Um, yeah. And, uh, I'll just note really quickly that the, all of the Scarlets are, are pretty much the same. Scarlet solo is made for guitar. So if you're just recording guitar yourself, uh, you have an input for a, a microphone and an input for guitars. So you can do singer songwriter type recordings and things like that. Um, 
So cool. Um, let's talk about the uh, software a little bit and uh, the free stuff that comes with every Scarlet that you're going to be using today, John. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll flip into uh, the Pro Tools first screen so you can see that. <clears throat> and uh, we'll be working in here today. Uh, it's pretty much a blank session. Uh, just so you know, um, the only thing you're seeing here is I do have a drum loop that I pulled in from Splice. Uh, Splice is a really cool loop library. It's got a lot of different genres. It's great for everything from hip hop, dance music, or even rock like I'm going to be doing today. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've dragged in a loop from there. That's one thing that does come with the Scarlets. It's a two free month subscription, um, but there's a lot of other great things. We got Pro Tools first. Um, we have some great effects that you're going to see that come with it as well. So um, yeah, I mean, especially with Splice, and it's kind of a little bit of something for everyone. Um, we also do the Ableton Live Lite, which is a lot of fun as well. Um, for guitars, but I'm decided to go with Pro Tools today since it has the 11 rack and uh, some specific guitar features. Yeah, it does have like 12 exclusive effects that uh, that aren't available for the normal Pro Tools first. Uh, sub, uh, I, I guess subscriber um, is what you'd call it. Um, yeah, and it gives right. just gives you a chance to to dial in that tone. Um, very cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna step back, John, and let you uh, talk through um, setting up the the session. Like you said, you you dragged in your um, your drum loop from Splice there, but uh, I'll let I'll let you take it from here. Awesome, Dan. Thank you. So um, great. So like I said, all I've really done um, so far in this session was created a new session and said okay, uh, and then for Splice, it's really cool. You can literally drag loops directly in. So if I wanted to take something else, you can click and drag it into Pro Tools. It'll create a track for you. And that works that way in most DAWs, I believe, too. Yeah. Really cool. Um, not trying to plug Splice at all, but it is a, it is a cool pr platform. Um, in any event, uh, let's get into the guitar stuff. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a track for the guitar. So I'm going to go up here to Track and create a new track. Now, the default setting is mono, which is perfect, because we're just using one channel right now with the quarter-inch input. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create that track. And you know what? One thing I didn't mention uh, that I should have mentioned is that the, in the input here is a combination jack. So you can put an XLR or a quarter-inch in there. Uh, and even on the Scarlet Solo, that this input here is switchable between line and instrument. So this is actually really important. Uh, when you are using a guitar like this, you're going to want to flip the interface into that instrument mode. It gets the input at the right level for that. Um, on the Solo and the 2i2, there's a little button for that. Um, on some of the larger interfaces, like the 4i4, we have access to that in Focusrite Control. So I just wanted to point that out really quickly. If you go to the input settings on Focusrite Control, you can see that I have the instrument uh, engaged there, and it's also lit up on the interface. So that's a really important point. So let's get back to the DAW here. Uh, we have our blank track. I'm just going to label that guitar. Let's do that. Cool. So now um, I'm about to record enable this, but before I do, I just want to make sure I select the proper input. So by default, we have input one. That's my microphone, as you can kind of see lighting up here. We want to use input two because that's where my guitar is plugged in. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I'll hit record enable. And I'm going to also hit the uh, little input monitoring button here. Uh, just to make sure I'm monitoring through Pro Tools. That's going to be important as we add more and more effects. So just have a listen to this real quick. Or, you know, a little like uh... So it's kind of a nice clean sound, but it's not so natural. And that's because normally, of course, you're plugging a guitar into an amplifier. So part of the sound of the electric is... Uh, the sound hitting the speaker, going through the air. And so when you plug in directly, like we're doing now, you want to use a plug-in to kind of emulate that. And uh, so a lot of DAW software these days are come with a certain solution for that. Uh, in the case of Pro Tools First, they're giving us a light version of their 11 rack, which is really cool. So I'm going to go, I'm go ahead and add that on my channel so you can kind of hear how, how big of a difference that makes. So we're going to go to Plug-in. It's in the harmonic category in Pro Tools First. And we'll go to 11 light. I'm going to flip this into the uh, Vintage Crunch setting. There's a couple of settings uh, here. You get the Vintage Crunch and then that, the other more modern distortion. Uh, for the sake of the demo, it's a little bit easier to hear with a little less distortion. So we're going to go with this. So let's hear this real quick. It's breaking up a little bit there. Uh, while we're doing this, it's good to keep an eye on our gain halo over here. See if when I'm hitting my strings, it's getting a little bit yellow. So I'm going to back that down just a little bit. Um, and again, just so you know, if I was too hot, we'd be yeah. on red. So what's up, Dan? It was glowing red there. Yeah, I saw that. 
Yeah, yeah. So in general, that's not something you're going to want, at least not on, a, on this kind of setup. So let's go ahead and back that down a little bit <clears throat> and uh, keep a more moderate level. In general, that's what these plugins are expecting. Sure. Um, and then you, if you want more gain, of course, you can do it on the plugin. So I'm going to add a little bit there, maybe give some presence, make this brighter. So crank my speaker up. All right, that's kind of cool. A little bit dry, um, but we can always go add some reverb on there later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Dan, is that coming through okay? Yeah, it sounds great on this end. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now is, um, let's see here. I'm going to record a guitar lick with no click or anything. We're just going to do a little couple of bars, and we're going to take a listen to it, and we'll go from there. Um, so here we go. So I'm already record enabled. Remember, that's important. Um, I hit the record up here in Pro Tools first. It does give you that extra. So now I'm ready to go. And I hit the play bar or the play button or the space bar. So let's see. Three. <laughs> All right, cool. Now I can yeah. already tell that was a little bit, uh, a little bit sloppy. But what was that, Dan? Yeah, let's listen back to that with the uh, the click track on. Cool. Let's give it a shot. So uh, to get a click in Pro Tools first, you just go to track and create click track. And it creates a little track here that's um, it's going to give you a click. If you don't want it on, you can simply mute it. So I believe I tried to start on the one here. Let's see what happened. Oh. Yeah, the reason we didn't hear that track is because I left the input monitoring button on. So it was listening to my input. So I want to disengage that, and now I'll hear the playback. Let's try it again. Okay, that was pretty close, but you could hear on the second repetition especially, it's kind of fell off of the click there a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, about, how about we try that with the click on when you record? Yeah, awesome. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to just, um, I'm going to duplicate this track real quick. Just get rid of that, of course. So now all I've done is I created a duplicate track. Say I wanted to save this, you know, and, and do another take. This is sure. one way of doing that. So I'll mute that, come down here and get this track ready input monitoring great so now we got our click on and we're going to record to that see how that goes let's give it a shot now i have no excuse let's try it <laughs> i believe it'll count us off yeah All right, cool. I think that was a little bit tighter. Let's give it a listen. Yeah, it sounded pretty good from this end. Oh, there's that input button again. Here I saw go. that. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, that sounded super tight. Totally. I mean, still a little bit of sloppiness in the middle there, but at least each downbeat, each beat is hitting where it's supposed to hit in a big arrangement. You can maybe even get away with that. Uh, but at the very least, uh, I know where I can improve on that lick, right? Yeah, and then, and that's a good point. I'm glad I'm glad you said it that way. But you know, you can keep practicing that lick and and until you nail that timing. Totally. And that's and that's a great way to uh, you know, like you said before, that's a great reason to record yourself to begin with. Absolutely. So. Um, Another cool thing that playing with a, a click lets you do is once you have that guitar part in as a, you know, if it's played to a click properly, you, a lot of times you can go ahead and, and drag a drum loop on there after the fact. Um, sure. You know, like we can try that right now. Let's see what that comes out like. I'm going to put this on the one. Hopefully. Yeah, as long as it's a, um, a, a drum loop that's on the same uh, um, yeah, uh, so tempo, you should be I good. was going to record it over again, but let's just see what this sounds like. And then we can still, we can still try that, but let's just yeah. see what we got here, so. Pretty good. I mean, I don't even know that I would need to go back and do that over again. Yeah, that that was uh, that was really good. Uh, but 
you want to yeah just for the sake of things you want to go ahead and do it again yeah. yeah yeah so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to duplicate this again make a little make a little mess here cool we'll do the same thing as before this is uh there's a little different ways to do different takes i'm kind of a little old school with this creating a bunch of tracks but uh anyways let's go in here um yeah, I like it because you can always you can always go back and then audition them and, and decide which one is best. Yeah, and it's an easy way to comp. Uh, you know, if you wanted to go ahead and take the best of each track, you can kind of drag pieces in there. Maybe we'll get into that on another live stream. But, sure. Uh, yeah, in any that's event, a good idea. Let's go ahead and do this with some drums. Let's see what we got. So yeah, I mean, just the you could hear how like because I had I was listening to the drums, it made me focus on the rhythm a little bit more, and it kind of created a different take. Yeah, yeah, because you uh, you know when you're recording to the click, you know that's just a steady giving you every single beat. It's not giving you all the nuance of, of all the the upbeats and the and those notes that are in between. Totally. So um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll keep this. Um, let's see. Let's did we play that one back yet? Let me. Let's yeah, let's, let's listen back to that. That's getting me every time. Yeah, that, that's, it's a lot tighter, like you were almost uh, playing with the band there, um, you know, rather than the click. I like that. Good stuff. Yeah, totally. So um, I like how that's coming out. So where would I go from here a lot of times? Um, I think a lot of times I would actually go ahead and double that track. Uh, sure. Kind of do like a left-right panning thing. I'm not sure how much that'll come across in the stream, but that is a really good technique. Um, if you don't have a second guitar part, just play your primary guitar part two separate times. Yeah. Um, maybe do a little stereo panning, and you know you can experiment with maybe slightly different EQ on each side of it or whatever. But that's going to give you a much fatter sound too. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it it, it um, adds more texture. Um, and yeah, if you have two separate performances, uh, it'll it'll sound different in in each year. So yeah, that's a that's a really good way of. Uh, that's a really good tip. It's actually kind of fun to just you play it slightly differently too. In fact, let's just give it a shot. Hear what it sounds like right now. Um, okay. We'll we'll try it out. <clears throat> so this time I'll leave, I'll leave this track playing unmuted. Our old okay. scratch tracks are muted from before. Um, so we're gonna play along, and uh, we'll see what happens. Let's give it a shot. <clears throat> So you can kind of hear I emphasize different notes there. Um, let's play it back. I won't worry about stereo panning from now. I think you'll still get the idea. Let's check it out. Sure. Yeah, it's kind of cool, right? Yeah, I like it. That's 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 coming together. It's uh, you're getting a, getting a song together there. It sounds great. <laughs> Awesome. So all we've used so far is the 11 rack amp sim. Um, but th like Dan mentioned, there's just in the Pro Tools first package alone, there's, I think you said 12 plugins that come with it. So uh, yeah, there are 12 exclusive, ex exclusive effects. I, I promise I know how to speak words um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that were made just for Focusrite um, because Pro Tools first is a, uh, a free app. Uh, but the, the thing that makes it uh, special for Focusrite is, is though, are those 12 exclusive effects uh, that are modeled after Avid's 11 rack, which is a, a rack mount um, uh, amp simulator. That's pretty classic and uh, pretty great. Yeah, sound. yeah, totally. So, I mean, I'm looking through some of them right now. You can see some of the reverbs. I don't believe I have anything really extra installed right now. Uh, the TSAR reverb is from SoftTube. That also comes with the Scarlet interfaces. So, right. Um, so that's what's really cool about the software package. You have all this stuff in 11, but then there's some other, with Pro Tools first, but there's some other things in there too that you can use. Yeah. Um, the Focusrite Red uh, EQ and compressor, I believe I have in here. Yeah, the Red EQ. And those are um, great. Those are great plugins. And those are, of course, modeled after the uh, original uh, rack mounted um, uh, compressor and EQ. Um, and you also get a subscription to the Plugin Collective, which every other month you get um, effects and plugins just dropped into your account. So you just have to download and install them. Exactly. 
So I'm just going through some of these. I added them onto the set, the second duplicate guitar track, um, like a graphic EQ, um, kind of pedal style. So there's some cool little stomp box effects is uh, spring reverb. Let's just, let's see what we got on here. I'll, I'll play the loop and mess around with some settings. Sounds good. Turn the mix down a little bit. Just turn it all down a little bit. You can hear that going. EQ. It's a little bit honky. Maybe we pull that down a little bit. There you go. Not sure how much that comes through on the on the live stream there, but um, that's just a little bit of a sampling. I'm, I'll give you. A, I'm going to do one more part, and then maybe I'll show you some more of the effects if, if that's cool with you. Yeah, sounds good. Are you going to do a little bit of a lead for us? We're going to try. We're going to try to fancy myself a lead guitar player. I'm usually on the acoustic strumming uh, strumming. Well, sad, happy songs, all, all kinds of songs. <laughs> but anyways, let's go ahead and so let's make another track. Um, I won't duplicate this time. We'll start from scratch, but same difference. We'll create a new track. We're going to label this lead. All right. <clears throat> We're going to do the 11 rack again. Actually, I'm going to put it down here on the second channel, though. Harmonic 11 right. I'm going to leave this here. Vintage. So let's take a listen to what we have so far. Oh, I almost made the big mistake of the wrong input. Don't forget that, especially with guitar plugins. Microphones into guitar plugins, generally not a good thing, although it could be a cool special effect. That's let's another see. way to layer some vocals, you know, just put them through a, a guitar uh, yeah. sim and, and, you know, turn it down or, or your keyboard. As long as, you're, as long as you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what I've done for this one is I'm going to crank the lead or the gain a little bit. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Oh, this is so low. That's why. There we go. All right. So we got a little bit more going on there and I'm even going to see, I believe they have a cool little, where is it? Like a blackout distortion. This is a cool one too. It's going to add a little bit more even. Yeah. I like that one. So you're going to hear a little bit of buzz, but that's normal. You got a single coil guitar pickup. So unfortunately you kind of have to gate that out uh, or otherwise. Uh, in post production, but anyways, let's just let's just have a little fun. I'm gonna leave leave that. I'm also gonna put a delay plugin on here because those are always a good time. So this buck, I just noticed this one the other day, Dan. The Bucket Brigade that also comes in there too. That's that's pretty cool. Oh, I'm not sure I've ever noticed that one before uh, in my productions. I, I don't play guitar myself, but you know I do a lot of um, you know producing, so I, I throw these things on there. Nice, nice. All right, so this might be a little. Yeah, I like that delay. All right, cool. Let's give it a shot. Don't mind that noise. I got to probably take a look at these pickups. <laughs> <laughs> this is wired a very long time ago. But we're calling out your guitar here, John. It's, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, Good thing we're, it's age. Hey, we're not picking up, picking on your guitar here. We're, uh, we're learning how to, to get better and, and layer some things in Pro Tools. So. Yeah, man. That's no, all good. So here we go. Let's check out this lead part. Um, cool. Well, that's great. Let's show how easy it is to just stop when you make a mistake. <laughs> Click it, and you're right back into it again. Super quick. <laughs> we're going to do one more take, and then we're just going to run with it. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, we're just getting into it, you know? <laughs> yeah, we might need a longer loop next time. I like it. Yeah, it but sounds pretty good. Let's, let's listen back to that. Yeah, let's give it a shot. <laughs> well, you, drum, you put enough delay in there and you can't really hear it there, but I was, you get the idea. <laughs> I get the idea. Yeah, man, it's, it's, it sounded pretty great here. Um, how do you feel about uh, opening this up to some questions? That'd be great. Let's do it. I have. Um, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna take our last question first. It's gonna be very controversial, but uh, we have a question. What is the best hardware setting to get a good output quality? Uh, and then second, please show how to export this with the best uh, quality and low file size. Is that something you're you're able to do? 
I think you, so. Yeah. Um, the first question was are you talking about maybe gain settings on the hardware. Uh, yeah. So um, I'm sorry. Uh, that was uh, what is the best hardware settings to get a good output quality? Um, I, I think you just uh, set the gain halos. We covered that a little bit earlier. Yeah. So I would say, um, yeah, the two most important things was when I mentioned turning on that instrument mode, at least in this case, when you're using a, a regular guitar with because uh, that's going to make that that signal at the right, you know, it's going to make the preamp respond properly. That's the level Correct. that the uh, amp simulators are looking for, too. So that's yep. that's important as well. As far as your um, your gain settings, I tend to keep them on the lower side. Um, again, for that same reason, um, you don't really, again, this may vary depending on what plugin you're using, but a lot of these amp simulators are going to do, um, they like to have a little bit of headroom. So if you, if you, if you, if you're sending the input in super hot, um, sometimes that's not exactly what the, what the emulated circuits are expecting because when they're making these plugins, they're kind of emulating what the real hardware does. Right. So, right. When you, so that's, so when you're plugging your guitar, guitar into like a pedal, for example, that pedal is operating at a much different voltage and, and, and all that good stuff. So uh, it's in general, plus these days with um, another good thing I would mention, actually, if you talk about settings is 24 bit recording. Um, sure. Much more important to me than even the higher sampling rates. Um, if you're at 24 bit, um, you don't have to worry about peaking at minus three or minus one because you have, you know, you can peak at minus 12 and you have plenty of depth of dynamic range there to work with. So I would say 24 bit depth is important. Leave a little bit of headroom on your, uh, on your input there and make sure you're on the instrument level input is a, is a good start at least. Awesome. Um, and think, it looks, yeah. looks like that was two, two questions we answered there, Aaron, from uh, the beginning, uh, the best practices for, for gain staging. It looks like you, you covered that one as well, John. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, this is going really great. Do you, uh, do you, do you have a second to show us how to export this, um, with the best quality, low file size? Uh, is that, is that something that you can show in Pro Tools first? We can take a look here. Um, yes, I have, I suspected this was the case. Pro Tools first, it doesn't have uh, MP3 export. Does it, Dan? Um, I, I, it here. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't have mine open right now and I don't recall. Yeah, I don't believe it does. Um, that's okay. Yeah, I don't see it in here. I believe when you go to export, you have to do it on compressed version. But a lot of other DAWs um, will let you do the right to MP3. Um, but in any event, so uh, really the export is going to depend on your project settings. So, you know, you're, I just started with a regular 4241 sample rate here. Um, you know, if you were exporting this and you were planning on burning it to a CD, that would be mm -hmm. an important thing, 441. Um, you might want to export to 48k if you're if you know that you're um, going to be using this with video. That's a t really popular sample rate with video. Um, yep. But in general, you know you're probably making this decision when you start the project, not so much on the export. Um, so really, you don't have a whole lot of choices here. You can use Wave or AIFF. Either one is fine. Uh, AIFF is more on the Mac side, but they're both uncompressed audio. Um, and then from there. Uh, you would have to downsize that to MP3, and you can use a number of programs for that. I know, I think iTunes will do that for you. Um, but yeah, it's actually it's probably better off to. Uh, you definitely always want to export at least one version of your of your tune in in an uncompressed format because from there you can always compress it down further. Um, you want to keep that master copy uh, per se. Yeah, nice, it, at the at the highest res, you know, the high uncompressed resolution. Because you, you know, to to throw an analogy in there, you can't unbake the bread. Um, you know, you can't uncompress something that's already been compressed. Right. Um, so you you always want to have that copy of a wave or an AIFF file, um, and you can always turn that into an MP3. But you always refer back to that that higher quality when you're when you're uh, processing it anyway. Right, right. And I didn't mention on here, they do have the bit depths as well. So again, I would, if you were already recording at 24 and, you know, I would export it that way. If you had to do an export for a certain, like a CD, that would be 16 bit, 44 yeah. one. And um, you made a good point there. Um, uh, and you said, this is, these are some things that you start at the beginning. So when you do start a session, if you do intend on, you know, putting out something like this, you should think about the quality of what your output is going to be. Um, you know, if you're just laying down ideas, it doesn't matter quite as much, but if you go in with the intent of, uh, uh, recording something and, and, and exporting it, you should think of how you want to export that as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, cool. Um, let's see, we had a couple other questions. Um, I had a question about recording uh, bass and GarageBand. We might cover that in another video. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can just mention in general, um, I mean, yeah, you can, that's definitely a yes. I uh, love yes. that, you, you know, just plug in the same way I did instrument level and then in GarageBand, 
Uh, GarageBand has a lot of great AMP simulators as well. So, I mean, if you get a if, so Scarlet on a Mac is a lot of fun. Between Pro Tools first and all the stuff that you get with the Scarlet, and then GarageBand, it's like unlimited fun, really. <laughs> it is, yeah. Uh, I was I was playing around in GarageBand um, uh, just yesterday, and I was just amazed at how many um, easy effects they have there as well. And it's a you know it's a free app uh, that comes with your Mac if you have a Mac. Yeah, and they let you use plugins now too, so you can even take advantage right. of some of those, uh, like the SoftTube bundle, and inside right. a GarageBand, I believe. So that's it's pretty cool. And uh, you you asked about the iTrack solo in particular, um, yeah, made for recording guitar and bass. So you just plug directly in, and yeah, just open the GarageBand app on your um, on your iOS device, and it, it should be as easy as that. And uh, you know that that might be a topic of a of a future live stream. Yeah, totally. Uh, same settings apply. Just make sure with your bass guitar that you're going to flip into that instrument mode. Um, unless you have an active bass. If you have an active bass, you might want to experiment with the line level output um, and see which works better for you. But for your standard pa passive bass guitars, uh, instrument level setting here. That sounds great. Well, John, it looks like we've uh, we've run out of time for this stream. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We talked about some of the reasons to record yourself and the benefits, talked about different hardware and software settings, um, and then setting up. And and John uh, did a really cool uh, track for us. Uh, do you want to play that for us one more time as we as we fade out here? <laughs> yeah, why not? I'll lower that. I'll lower that lead part a little bit, but let's uh, we'll play it out. Thanks right. for having me, Dan. Good time. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll catch you next time.